course, as I have said since the beginning of time, there are mistakes that have hum police officers are human beings. There are mistakes that happen. Police are people too. So, so what exactly was Sonia Massey? Welcome to Races of the Week, where we expose the stupidity and hypocrisy of discrimination in hopes we can build a more perfect union. And also laugh. As usual, I would like to thank today's sponsor, Racism. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the page and definitely leave me any possible suggestions for nominees in the comments. Now, first, I would like to take a moment to recognize Sonia Massey the 36-year-old Illinois black woman who had called 911 for help with what she perceived as a prowler and ended up deceased on the floor of her home thanks to the very police that she called. The police that she greeted at the door by saying, please don't hurt me. You couple that with the fact that her last words were sorry and you have something that's going to impact me in a very significant way. Those of you that have been watching the channel for a very long time, I've spoke at length about Elijah McClain and the reasons why that loss touched me and hurt me so much. The fact that he was saying, I'm sorry, as he was being killed, literally. And the reason why that hurt me so much is because he really was internalizing his own brutality. He thought in that moment, or at least he vocalized in that moment, that in some way he was responsible for his own brutality. And when you greet the police by saying, please don't hurt me, and your last words being sorry, you echo that exact same sentiment, and you engender that exact same response in me. We found out later that the man who shot her, Sean Grayson, the 30-year-old Sangamon County Sheriff's deputy who has since been fired while being indicted by a grand jury last week on three counts of first degree murder and one count each of aggravated battery with a firearm and official misconduct in connection with the shooting on July 6, didn't activate his body camera until after he had fatally shot Massey. The other deputy had activated his body camera when he first arrived at the scene and in that body cam footage, Grayson could be heard telling his partner that Massey wouldn't need medical help immediately after the shooting. Grayson later goes to his vehicle to get his own medical supplies, and when he gets back to the house, he asks if there's anything he can do, and he's told no, to which he says, all right, I'm not even going to waste my med stuff then. This was a man who record show worked at six different law enforcement agencies in four years after being charged twice with a DUI in 2015 and 2016. Now, just the first part of that, having worked at six different agencies in four years, would be disqualifying for a lot of jobs that require a lot less competence than walking around with a gun and a license to use it. Somehow, working for six agencies in four different years wasn't a red flag for this man to give him a license to kill. Not to mention the fact that you couple that with the DUIs and you have a man who I can only wonder why he was deemed to be qualified to walk around with a badge and a gun. There's also the fact that according to Sonia Massey's family, they were initially told that her death was self-inflicted. They were told that this woman had taken her own life in the initial accounts from the police. So I have to ask, how many times do we have to have the initial reports from the police completely contradict what comes out later in footage or what the official report becomes before we stop taking these initial reports as gospel. Because for me, it's not very many. 
It's not very many at all. If you have a friend, if you have a relative, if you have a coworker who tells you something that is repeatedly proven not to be the case, how long would it take you to stop taking what they say as gospel? I'm not even saying to assume what they're saying is a lie. There's a long way from assuming what they say is a lie from assuming what they say is the truth. I'm saying in that space in between is the ability to not receive the information they're giving you as necessarily exactly the way it went down. Our refusal as a country, okay, our refusal to move off of taking what they say as absolute gospel is why we are continually in this place. This report is exhaustive, way too long, and absolutely heartbreaking. Now, this seems like a pretty cut and dry case to the point that I haven't seen a whole lot of pushback from the back the blue, no matter what crowd. But there was one, there was one whose anti-blackness runs so deep, she can even back an agency hopping, drunk driving, no assistance giving officer who shot a woman who opened the door after calling for help and saying, don't hurt me. And that one is today's nominee, Candace Owens. Okay, roll the clip. Of course, as I have said since the beginning of time, there are mistakes that happen. Hu- Police officers are human beings. There are mistakes that happen. Ooh, we are starting out hot. Mistakes that happen. There are mistakes that happen. Police are people. Okay. Um, when those mistakes result in a loss of life, there is supposed to be a reaction for that. There is supposed to be some justice associated when those mistakes result in a loss of life. Let's take our officer Grayson and his record, for instance. The man has two DUIs, yet he was deemed fit in order to be an officer and walk around with a badge and a gun. Now, if those DUIs had resulted in loss of life, I don't know that to be the case. I believe that our criminal justice system is built to have some bend when there is a loss of life. There are mistakes that happen. Police officers are human beings. There are mistakes that happen. Some mistakes are not equal to other mistakes. I also find it fascinating that at no point is there ever mistakes happen and that's applied to the person who got shot. That's never applied to the civilian who meekly opens the door saying, please don't hurt me. We can't make mistakes, but the people that are trained to handle these situations Whatever happens, happens. They can make mistakes, but we can never make mistakes. This is always only applied in one direction. Police officers are human beings. Police are people too. So, so what exactly was Sonia Massey? The idea that now you're going to use this situation and all the usual suspects are already involved, we know that Attorney Crump is already involved, to then try to make black Americans believe that this happened simply because she was black is pointedly ridiculous. So I am saying to black Americans today, do not take this bait. 
yes, what happened in this situation, I think he's going to have a very hard time, this officer, saying that he absolutely felt so threatened by boiling water that the only solution was for him to mindfully say, I'm going to shoot you in the face, and that's what he did. I think that that's that going to be a very steep hill to climb. But the reaction from black America cannot be exactly what they want. There is a reason that whoever is in control of Joe Biden's account instantly tweeted about this, okay? It's because they think we're stupid. They think we're emotional. They think that we always respond illogically and emotionally. Stupid, emotional, and illogical. Hmm. That would be kind of like consistently coming to the defense of officers whenever this happens, right? That would, that would also be no matter what the circumstances are, even circumstances that you yourself admit don't make any sense and he's going to have a tall hill to climb to defend himself, even in that moment, you will still find a way to turn on a camera and give a fervent defense to the officers. Hmm, stupid, emotional, illogical. That tracks. There is a reason that whoever is in control of Joe Biden's account instantly tweeted about this, okay? It's because they think we're stupid, they think we're emotional, they think that we always respond illogically and emotionally, and that it's an easy way for them to shore up votes by saying, oh, look, forget that we've destroyed everything around you and that we got you to burn down your neighborhoods, um, you know, burn down your neighborhoods in 2020, and then obviously stole a bunch of money because none of that money actually went to making your neighborhoods better. This is amazing. This, this is amazing. Absolutely incredible. So it was Joe Biden. It was the Democrats. It was the people looking for criminal justice reform. They were the ones that got you to burn down your neighborhoods. So it wasn't your pushback to wanting to be seen as a whole person that created the frustration that boiled over in 2020. It was the people doing, doing the pushing. It was the, it was the people wanting us to feel like whole human beings. Hmm. I would love to see that math. I, I would love to see that math. Look, another video, and this means racism is back, and both Brussels because we're gonna show you how emotional we are. And that's exactly what Joe Biden did. He tweeted this on the heels. He wrote, Sonia Massey, a beloved mother, friend, daughter, and young black woman should be alive today. Sonia's death at the hands of a police officer reminds us that all too often black Americans face fears for their safety in ways many of the rest of us do not. Sonia's family deserves justice. I am heartbroken for her children and family as they face this unthinkable and sensible, senseless loss. Jill and I mourn with the rest of the country, and our prayers are with Sonia's families, loved ones, and community during this devastating time. Okay, again, going to say here, this, this happened in Springfield, Illinois, that the only reason whoever is in control of his account is putting that out there is because too many black Americans are turning toward Trump. They think too many black Americans are catching on to the Democrat scan, and so, scam, pardon, and so they scan every one of these situations. Hmm, too many, too many black Americans are turning towards Trump, so that's why Biden felt the need to tweet this. Well, then it would have made all the sense in the world for Trump to tweet this, right? To endear himself to, to black America. Did Trump, did Trump tweet something, huh? Did, did Trump tweet about Sonia Massey? Does, does, his, does his true social account work? Oh, oh wait, it does, because he saw fit to post this. to post this, but he didn't have time to post about Sonia Massey. That's weird. I would say that's weird, you know, for somebody that obviously is, is receiving so much love from the black community to, to further entrench himself um, that he wouldn't have posted that because because he surely finds way to exploit other crimes. I mean, let this have been a migrant. Let this have been a migrant. Let this have been uh, an, an immigrant or anybody vaguely brown. You know how fast he would have posted about that because that fits his narrative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell, he would have posted about this if Grayson was dusty enough. They think too many black Americans are catching on to the Democrat scan, and so, scam, pardon, and so they scan every one of these situations and they leave out the hard facts. And the hard facts are that if you examine this just based on a percentage rate, 
white Americans unarmed are more likely to be shot and killed by police officers in mistakes, shot and killed by police officers in these correspondences than black Americans. That is a fact. It is an inescapable fact. There's no way to examine the statistics and not come out with that understanding, okay? And they don't want you to know that. Who told you that, Candace? Huh? Who told you? Was, was it the Heritage Foundation? Was it, was it a Patriot Front numbers and stuff? I need to know who told you that. They don't want you to know that because it's patently false. I will give you this against my best judgment. I actually went and did some research. Black people who account for 13% of the U.S. population accounted for 27% of those fatally shot and killed by police in 2021, according to mapping police violence. Now, how you get from 13% of the population to accounting for 27% of those fatally shot and killed by police and still say that white people are statistically more likely to be shot and killed by police. I, I, how, how, again, how you do that math. Now, I will give you this. If you want to now account for police interactions, right? If you want to account for arrests and the frequency and propensity that black people have for encountering police, then those 13 and 27 numbers get a whole lot closer. However, that would be to hold the black community responsible for the over-policing of their own neighborhoods. Is that what you want to do? Huh? Is that what you want to do to make your numbers look better? Is to hold black people accountable for their own over-policing. That would be like holding you accountable from getting fired from the Daily Wire. So what? I happen to agree with uh, your side of things when it comes to how everything went down. A, the facts is the facts and the numbers is the numbers. And I would also like to add that that blanket immunity that Trump touted that he was willing to give police officers would come into play in a case like this, where a guy with two DUIs who has hopped with six different agencies can open the door to a woman saying, don't hurt me and not render aid after he shoots her in the head. This is the kind of officer Trump wants to make sure walks away scot-free. We're going to give our police their power back and we're going to give them immunity from prosecution. So they're not prosecuted for doing their job. So congratulations to you, Candace Owens, and while we're at it, Donald Trump. You can get some of this too. You are our racist of the week. Huh? Do I ever agree with Candace Owens? Let me tell you, if you are not a conspiracy theorist by now, it's because you are not intelligent. Yeah, I'm going, I'm going to have to keep looking. But as always, if you have somebody you would like to nominate, go ahead and leave it in the comments. You can always email me at reese.waters at gmail.com and be sure to subscribe to the page to make sure you get notified when the next video drops. By the way, I have an email list that I maintain and I have a newsletter that I send out periodically as well. I would love for you to get on my email list. Feel free to shoot me a message at reese.waters at gmail.com. That's R-E-E-S-E -E dot W-A-T-E-R-S at gmail.com. And the same goes if you have any suggestions for videos, if you have any nominees for Races of the Week, if you have something that you are troubled by or you just want to throw me a kudos, feel free to email me. I don't always get a chance to look at all of the comments, but I definitely look at all of the emails and I respond.